he's one of the leading figures in the fight against compulsory vaccination in France. But Jacques Bessin doesn't want to be labelled as anti-vaccines. He describes himself as an enlightened citizen, set against what he calls a medical dictatorship. His battle began in the early 2000s when his daughter Ophélie was refusing food and was admitted to the hospital. Their doctors insisted on vaccinating her. Bessin disagreed. It was as if her condition was secondary to vaccination. So you start asking questions. Why the hurry? Why the insistence? Why vaccinate a child who's on respiratory support? What's the point? No one gave us any answers. Denounced by the hospital, Jacques Bessin was accused of child abuse. In court, he was told that he risked losing his daughter if he refused to comply. It wasn't until four years later that judges dropped the case, citing a 2002 law that allows any French citizen to refuse a therapeutic act. Today, Jacques Bessin heads up an association that fights for freedom of choice on all vaccination issues. Today, medicine has replaced religion. You're expected to believe in it and ask no questions. Doctors decide on behalf of parents, but if there's a problem, there's no one you can turn to. A sentiment of abandonment felt by dozens of associations across France. Away from the public eye, they thrive on social media. Some are openly anti-vaccines. Most are merely sceptical and warn about the supposed dangers of inoculation. Catherine Gache is the president of the Vaccines Victims Network. In 1989, the then student nurse was vaccinated against hepatitis B. Within weeks, she noticed unusual symptoms. Right away, I was feeling tired. I felt exhausted. I had a hard time walking and moving around. I was so tired that to open my eyes in the morning, I felt like I had to make a superhuman effort. Like her, hundreds of women, all vaccinated in the 1990s, noticed the same symptoms. They were later diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. Many, like Catherine Gache, took the case to the courts. But after 17 years of investigation, judges and experts ruled out any link between the vaccine and the disease. A defeat that has not deterred Catherine Gache, who now helps other people claiming to be vaccines victims to make their voices heard. The victims are not listened to, they're not cared for, they're completely rejected. Making vaccines compulsory is one thing, but then the government must take responsibility for any side effects that occur in children and other victims. The scepticism of some French people is not limited to worried parents and citizens' associations. Some doctors and scientists also challenge the medical consensus. Jérôme Mottier is a neurologist at the University of Créteil. His work focuses on the use of aluminium in vaccines, a substance which he says can cause a disease known as macrophagic myofasciitis. Here, in this cell, you can see these small crystals that look like needles. They're aluminium hydroxide particles. These particles that remain at the site of injection may cause complications in some patients, ranging from muscle pain to extreme fatigue and memory loss. A majority of scientists, however, have dismissed this theory and accused Professor Autier of encouraging suspicion. They can accuse me of fueling distrust all they want. I don't think I should be held responsible. On the contrary, it's this idea that nothing's wrong, that there is no problem. It's this culture of silence that's fueling distrust. Michel Rivasi has taken this battle for more transparency to the political stage. A member of the European Parliament, she condemns the influence of pharmaceutical lobbies in politics. She also calls for more research and accountability on the side effects of vaccines. Citizens nowadays want total transparency on drugs and vaccines. Trade secrets are not an excuse to keep information from the public. People also want more transparency on experts and their backgrounds. If all of that is on the table, then there won't be any problem. Trust is something you build. You can't impose it. Faced with controversy, the French government says its priority is to stamp out the spread of fake news by anti-vaxxers. At the Ministry of Health in Paris, the Director General of Health is clear if, like most drugs, vaccines may cause side effects, deciding not to vaccinate poses a definite risk to children and those around them.
Moi, ce qui me frappe... What strikes me is the fact that some people speak out about the side effects of vaccination, and they obviously have the right to do so, but that the victims of non-vaccination are not heard. A mother or father who has lost their child because they refuse to vaccinate will keep quiet, usually out of guilt for not following the recommendations of their doctor or their pediatrician. Despite the government's attempts to restore confidence in vaccines, including the launch of a public information website two years ago, France remains one of the most sceptical countries in the world. According to a study published in May, one in three disagree that vaccines are safe.